Hi, everyone. I wanted to pop on and uh, go through the analysis for the uh, My Funny Valentine excerpt that was in your textbook or in your workbook on page 266. Um, I read through your discussion comments and replies, and there was a lot of great discussion going on there, so that was great. Um, it would have been nice to have that in person in the classroom, but that wasn't to be for this semester. So I really appreciate you all responding to each other and trying to, trying to keep that discussion alive. Um, so this excerpt, they, the book wanted you to start off within the analysis in C minor. And their reasoning for that is because of this G7 that resolves into the C minor chord, which is one on measure 31. And by the end of this excerpt, we get to E flat major. So there is a modulation happening, C minor moving to E flat major. In measure 32, we see an E flat seven chord. This is an E flat dominant seventh chord. Dominant seventh chords only happen on a dominant. They do not happen on tonic. They do not happen on scale degree three. They are only dominant function chords. So anytime I see a dominant seventh chord, I write five seven. And then I need to interpret I'm going to erase all this for a minute. So I'm going to write 5-7 because I know that this is the dominant 7th chord. The next question is, is this a dominant 7th chord in C minor? The answer to that is no. So if the answer to that is no, I put a slash underneath that 5-7 because I know this has to be a secondary dominant chord. So what is it the dominant of? E flat is scale degree five of what? That's my question. And the answer to that is A flat. The next question is A flat is what scale degree in C? The answer to that is scale degree six. And that is the Roman numeral that goes underneath the slash. So just to recap, I encountered an E flat seven chord. E flat seven is a dominant seventh chord, which only happens on scale degree five. E flat is not five of C, so I know this has to be a secondary dominant chord. E flat is five of A flat, so it's five seven of A flat. A flat is six in C, so it is a five seven of six. And looking ahead to measure 33, it does go to six. But after that point, we start changing things. And we are headed to E flat major. So at this point, I always recommend that we start at the end. I know I'm gonna end up in E flat. Use colors here. I know I'm gonna end up in E flat. The chord before the E flat major chord is a 5-7 of E-flat. It's B-flat 7. So I know that's 5-7 of B-flat, of E-flat. The chord before that is the F minor 7. F minor 7 is 2-7 in E-flat major. And the chord before that, if I keep going, A-flat major, A-flat is 4 in the key of E-flat major. 4 can have a major 7th chord occurring on it. So there's my four chord in E flat. And if I back up one more, I have that A flat triad, which is also four in my new key. So it is not until I get to measure 33, measure 34, that I sense that I am going into the, my new key. Until that point, I could continue my analysis in C minor if I wanted to. But at some point, I'm shifting. The A flat major chord on measure 33 in the downbeat is the first chord that I can reinterpret in my new key. So that is the first place where I can have a pivot chord. This is going into E flat major. So that A flat major chord, the A flat major seventh, those are my pivot chords. 
The pivot chord is not the E flat seven in measure 32 because that's a secondary dominant that is emphasizing A flat. The resolution to A flat can be interpreted in both C minor as a six chord and in E flat major as a four chord. So the A flat major chord is where the pivot chord occurs.